CFR, this feels right. Uh, and with us is Tracy Aaron Smith, our guest today. Uh, before we jump in, let's check in with Tracy and she ha- see how she's feeling. Tracy, how are you <laughs> feeling today? You know, Joel, I'd say at the moment I'm feeling amazing. Um, other times I cry because I don't want to eat vegetables with my pasta. It's just sort of that time uh, in the world where I think everyone's on their own roller coaster. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, uh, absolutely. That's why I put butter on everything. <laughs> yeah. That's the new hashtag. <laughs> but, butter yeah. on everything. COVID-19. Butter makes it better. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, this is a really, this is going to be a really fun show. Tracy and I have known each other for well over 20 years. Uh, and we like to say that, you know, we, we basically somehow were separated at birth where Tracy's like the sister I never had. Uh, we definitely, there might, there might be some giggles in this show. That's kind of the relationship that we have here. Uh, Tracy is a international award-winning performer, speaker, and teacher. She's the founder and director of Solo Theater. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that because it's a lot about storytelling, and that's going to be a key part of today's show. Uh, and when I say award-winning, she has performed off-Broadway in New York, uh, Israel, coast-to-coast coast in Canada, San Francisco, and of course, so much work done here in her home of Toronto. Uh, and really uh, exciting uh, is also uh, the host and creator of a show on Amazon Prime called drag heels. So before we go any further, is this right? Do I have this correct? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, great. You nailed it. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, well, I also want to say uh, welcome to everyone to TFR. It is great to have you on the show. TFR, again, we, this is the show that's about how to influence others without manipulation. And what that means is we're able to speak to the logic, and most importantly, connect to the emotion. So the other person goes, yeah, this feels right. And so listeners, if you want to be able to learn how to influence, shift behaviors, ideas, and actions without manipulation, then you're in the right place to learn from leaders and experts in this field. And that's where we go to Tracy Aaron Smith. Uh, So Tracy, let's talk about Drag Heels. Uh, Congratulations. This has been picked up for its second season on Amazon Prime. Uh, So if if someone hasn't had a chance to see it yet, uh, what is the story of Drag Heels? Well, thank you so much for the congratulations. And this is a TV series based on my process of solo theater. Um, But in this particular case, we take eight drag artists. So these are people who perform in drag, sometimes drag kings, drag queens, or or in-betweens. Now it's very popular. You can do drag clown, all kinds of things. So they go through my process every week, which is transforming material from their own lives, personal stories, into a a one person show and they combine that with their drag and then we have a big show at the end of the of the whole series and um drag is very popular right now as i'm sure everybody knows and drag race with rupaul but what we say about our show is that there's no eliminations only celebrations so it's not a contest we start with eight participants and we finish with eight And the power of of the spectacularness of drag with the very heartwarming personal stories was really a winning combo. So people seem to like the show. It's been great. That's amazing. Well, you know, Tracy, this is one of the reasons why (laughs) I've always been a big fan of yours and you have so many fans around the world is this ability that you have to really connect and bring people's stories out. Uh, So we're going to talk a little bit later about something you are doing that's very relevant to Uh, to COVID right now is that you're uh, offering this ability to reach out to loved ones um, and get their stories uh, recorded uh, for people that are not able to connect with them. So we're going to talk about that towards the end. We're going to take our little improv, your communication break in between. Uh, But first, we're going to talk about storytelling, which is your your solo company and solo, S-O-U-L-O, because it's not just about solo. It is really about this ability that I've always appreciated its ability to tell stories without becoming, oh, woe is me, or, you know, sort of tragedy. Um, It's it's a gift on how to do that. There's a process. We'll talk about that. Uh, But first, everybody's thinking, oh, my goodness, there's no way I could get up on stage and tell my story. Uh, It's scary. So (laughs) why do people do it? Why is it so scary? (laughs) Okay, those are two great different questions. So I think people do it for a variety of reasons. Um, I think people come to believe that they have something of value to share with others, that they've lived through something, that if they shared their experience and how they got through it, it could be of benefit to others, that they have a deep need to be seen or heard can also be a valid reason. 
Um, and uh, there's a few reasons why it's so scary. And one is a petrifying fear of rejection. That if I stand up there and tell the truth about decisions I've made or what I've been through or what I lived through or what I did, that the tribe or the audience or the community will reject me. And this is a very ancient fear because in the olden days, like way, way back, if you were rejected by your community or your tribe, you were banished and you would literally starve to death in the woods. Uh -huh. So that doesn't happen as much anymore, although you could draw a parallel to being called out in social media. True. Like being socially rejected can be devastating, devastating, but it used to mean death. So that's why it is so closely associated with that primal fear of I'm going to die because yeah. I'm going to die if I fail. That's the main thing, not by doing it, but if they don't like it and if I'm rejected. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I mean, I guess that's, that's the feeling that we're going to be judged, we're going to be assessed, we're going to be evaluated, but on a deeper level, it's we're actually rejected. Exactly. It's the consequences of being rejected, which is I will then be alone. I won't have any company. I won't know how to find food. It's like just an ancient reptilian, ancient fear. Yeah. Um, but, so, yeah. So now, and this is how it ties into the show about This Feels Right, which is, I think this is a gift for people who've had the courage to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this. I'm going to try to tell my story. Um, and the ability to influence others now is that if you are feeling confident and courageous to be able to actually tell your story um, and, and sort of, and this is where you come in, Tracy, how, you know, how do you do that? How do you help them feel that confidence and courage to craft the story? Well, you just used an excellent word. It is about crafting. So uh -huh. I, a lot of people come to me because they'll come and see the solo class shows. So they'll see the final performances of people each doing their 10 minute pieces and they, they, they're wowed by it. And then they, they finally get up the guts to say, okay, I want to do that. So the class shows are my best infomercial when you see yeah. others do it. Yeah. And then when they come into the class, they realize a few things. And one is that they, they have 10 or five weeks, depending if we're doing it once or twice a week. And it's a process. So they don't have to just get up on the first day and do it. The whole first number of sessions are designed to excavate their history. So we go sort of looking for stories in their, in their psyche, in their history, in their souls. And then this is the metaphor that I use. Okay. So we go swimming around in your soul looking for stories. And then we catch a story or a fish and then forgive me vegetarians, but we <laughs> fillet it, uh -huh. we season it, we cook it, and then we serve it to an audience. So what I say to my participants is I will not allow you to slap an audience across the face with a raw fish. That is like an AA meeting. AA yes. meetings are great. They save yeah. lives, but they're not necessarily good theater. So we go through a process with the raw material so that, so that what you end up delivering at the end is a gift to the audience. Yeah, I like that. It's a, it's a gift because... I guess the traps are if we're playing, uh, you know, you said like if we're playing to sympathy and, and some other things, right? So it, what are some it, of those other things, the traps? Well, the traps are that you are up there to try to get something from the audience. Exactly uh -huh. like you're saying, Joel, to get sympathy, to get laughs, to get attention. Then you're not coming with arms full of gifts for the audience. And if you want to influence people, if there's a life lesson that you've learned based on what you've lived, then you want to bring that as a gift. And it takes time to craft your story so that that's how it's received. Yeah, I'm going to write this down. Sym don't do sympathy, laughter, and gifts, because that's all, that's all the traps I walk into. <laughs> oh, woe is me. Does. Are you ready to laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Yeah. And exactly. apparently it doesn't work. Yeah. No, or, or, you know, you won't get it, you know, when you, when you deliver a gift and when you're really, really honest about what you've been through and also what your struggles were, what, what I've seen time and time again is the audience come up to my performers with tears in their eyes and say, thank you. I thought I was the only one. I never had the courage to say the things you said. I feel less alone. Like for me, that stuff is worth its weight in gold if you've helped a human being feel less alone. 
What's magical about what you're saying is that these are people who are not actors. It's exactly. Half my students are actors and half are not. Yeah. And it doesn't matter because you're not playing a role. You're telling your own story. So it's like the great equalizer. Which can be even scarier to be telling your own story. So <laughs> like you're not so hiding behind a script. Like, so all, it's only the actors that feel that way. Yeah. So a, a number of actors I've worked with, this is extra terrifying for them because never have they walked on stage un, unmasked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just here I am, here's my life. They're always, you know, hiding behind or, or using, speaking through a character. Yeah. But once they get over that fear, they see how rich all the gifts are that they have to share without a playwright writing it for them. Yeah. So how, you know, so, I mean, it sounds like it's a lot of not being focused, you said, on, on, on the, the, what you're trying to do, but the, maybe the, the intention, but so that you, you, you have, you're not self-conscious. Yes. So the way to get over self-consciousness is to be inside the story. Uh huh. So, so there's a couple of techniques that I can teach right now that anyone who's working on their story at home or their talk, it would help them. Okay. Okay, so one of them when you're writing is called using a thing called thick description. Now, thick description is when you talk about an experience and you use all of the senses. So what did it look like? What did it sound like, smell like, feel like? What was the environment that you were in? You know, was it sunny? Was it loud? Was it, could you hear a pin drop? And what was the environment like inside you? Was your heart racing? Were, were your palms sweating? Were you getting butterflies in your stomach? All of that takes the audience and you inside the story. And if you want to stop being self, self-conscious is when you are conscious of yourself. Right. You're outside yourself. How am I doing? Did I say that right? Is my mouth too dry? Is anyone laughing? Right. But if you're in the story, that stuff fades away. And the audience is in the story with you because we can see and smell. And I, and I mean sense when I say smell, not literally yeah. smell yeah. when someone is, is self-conscious and it makes the audience uncomfortable. Yeah. Like if I say it was, it was spring, you could smell that basically. <laughs> no, but <laughs> yeah, if you said, you know, it was spring and it smelled like damp earth right. and you could faintly smell the lilacs and the birds were singing then I start to, I'm, I'm more in the story than I am judging you. Yes. And, and I would be in the story too. Like if I'm thinking back at that moment, I'm not busy looking at the audience or, you know, but whatever story you're telling, whether you have to do a presentation, whether you, you have to talk at a meeting, whether you have to talk to, have a difficult conversation with someone to, to be so present in, 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 in the senses that you say, um, so that you're not focused on, you know, am I sounding stupid or how am I, how am I sounding? Yeah. Yeah. You, you are speaking from inside the story. Love that. Okay. Yeah. What's, what's the, what well, you had a, you had another, another thing you want to walk us through. Oh yeah. Thank you. And the yeah. other thing is, so that's thick description using yeah. all five thick senses. The other okay. one is what I call present tensing. So everything you say is happening now. Oh. So it's not, you know, I, I climbed up the mountain and I reached the peak. It's, I'm climbing up the mountain. The sun is just starting to peak over the cliff. I can hear this eagle soaring above. It's now. You want the audience like walking alongside you through the jungle, hearing each twig break and each, so that it's happening now. That's how you get people, that's how you take them on a journey. And then when you finish, sometimes people will literally feel like they've just landed back in their seats if you've told a good story. Right. And, and that's a good way, <clears throat> you know, people always say, how, how do I, you know, if I'm going to do a talk or something, how do I remember <laughs> what I'm going to say? Because if you're often trying to describe something, uh, it was 1985 and there was 10 of us and uh, uh, Joel, Joel, you know, it's like, woof, but it's like, I, uh, I'm, I'm in the bus and I'm driving the bus. Yes. And, yeah. and, and it's going to make it easier because you're not thinking I was, you're like, right. your brain will go there yeah. and see the people and you'll be able to describe. And the more clearly you see it, the more clearly the audience sees it. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I could see that. Like, that's the key. I, this is brilliant, Tracy, because you really get into the story. <laughs> Bravo. You should run a course. <laughs> uh, but I love this because you are so into it um, that you are not really focused about the, the, the audience is with you on this. You don't have to pull them in. It's not about you. It's about yeah. the story. Let the story do the work. Yeah. And, and another thing I've discovered in recent years is this idea that sometimes you have to be careful that your personality doesn't get in the way of the story. So let's say, you know, I'm, I'm a very excitable, passionate person, which I am. Yeah. But let's say at some point the story calls for simplicity and stillness. I have to let my personality get out of the way so the story speaks louder than me. Right. And again, um, I, I'm assuming that, the, you know, the personality is kind of what gets in our way sometimes of telling the story, that somehow we feel we have to fuel the personality? Well, or sometimes the personality will hijack the story. The story uh -huh. wants a moment of stillness. The story wants, like, let's say you've just said something really powerful. You want to literally like let those words sink down into the audience so they can absorb it. And if you're very hyper or excitable, which I am sometimes, you have to control that wild horse of your personality to let the story work its magic, work its power. Okay, and can the per uh, and I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm just wondering, can the personality be like a mask sometimes that we hide behind and that, that affects how we're going to tell the story and, and maybe that's why we get into that trap? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think there's a time to be yourself and be your personality on stage. Yeah. But when you go into the story, trust the power of the story that you don't need to layer your personality on top of it. You can let your own natural humor come out. Right. But the most important thing is what happened? Where were you? Who said what? How did you get through it? Yeah. If you have you know, humor. Yeah. <laughs> which we, which you do once in a while, Joel. <laughs> you're, you're lucky that way. <laughs> Lovely. Um, well, okay, this is good because, um, you know, what you're just saying about the, um, um, uh, about our personality coming through is that uh, what I always think is uh, take the story seriously, but don't take yourself so seriously. For sure. That's perfect. I love that. Yeah. That's um, really good. <clears throat> um, so you've been doing this for how many years then? Almost 20. I, de I developed the process when I was an instructor at Ryerson University. And originally I was teaching my courses there. And then I decided I wanted to go out on my own. And I started teaching, excuse me, across Canada, New York, San Francisco, Israel, Florida. And what's been um, the silver lining of what's going on now with the pandemic and everyone self-isolating yeah. is I'm teaching people from all over the world without leaving my home. So I have people joining from Israel, from, from New York, from LA and meeting each other like people, you know, cause I teach in groups. Right. So it's been amazing to watch people share what their experiences are of what we're going through now, plus their own personal stories from the past. So this, in a sense, this has been, um, you know, what have you seen for, for people? How are they like, this is, this is kind of a, in a sense, I'll say healing, I guess, in a sense, but it's, it's, I mean, what are you seeing from, from, from these group, these different groups coming together? Well, I'm seeing healing and I'm seeing humor. So I've started doing this thing that I call COVID confessions because of <laughs> a couple of weeks ago on Facebook, I posted hashtag COVID confessions. Yeah. I'm using self tanner. What's yours? And so people wrote all these things. And so I'm using that in the workshop, the one that I do for the general public, that's just an hour. And people are saying all kinds of things. Like one woman said, you know, I'll, I'll eat dinner. I'll brush my teeth. I'll get into bed in my pajamas with my New Yorker or Netflix. And yeah. then I'll eat some chocolate and I won't get out of bed to brush my teeth. I'll go straight to bed. Uh -huh. Or another person said, I'm putting Nutella on everything. Or a guy said, I cut a, uh, a Zoom call with my adult children short so I could watch American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> We're just confessing all kinds of things. So it's right. like this catharsis and it's yeah. humorous and people get to be honest. You know, some of this is stuff I call sometimes my work is like the anti Facebook because it talks about all the stuff we don't put on Facebook. Right. And if you want to be a powerful 
speaker, you need to look at the things you don't normally talk about because those are the things that will draw people in. Yeah, that's that's what's so interesting about like telling your your story. I think that I, I'm I'm envious of people to do that because I think that it takes so much courage to do that. Um, and and it is it's being if you want to be able to really connect with people, no matter what you do, whether you be a speaker or just con connecting with people one on one and in, in your community group or at work, uh, feeling the confidence and courage to not to not hide to be to be who you are. Um, I think is one of the biggest uh, payoffs of this. Absolutely. I mean, if we, if you look at the people that we really love and admire, we love and admire them because they've figured out how to be themselves on purpose. Yes. They've figured out how to be themselves in public. And it gives us subconscious permission to then be ourselves that we're okay. We're enough. We don't have to be like them. Yeah. I th and that's what, you know, and uh, it's funny because that's what we say. That's what, someone who we're attracted to people like that and we always yeah. say oh, that person is confident because they're, yeah. they're able to be themselves yeah exactly that i think the confidence is oh that person is in, enjoys being themselves i know those are the moments when i'm happiest when i'm like oh it's fun to be me it's interesting to be me yeah it, it, and it's the vulnerability flip, yeah go ahead well I was it's gonna say, vulnerability yeah go ahead how how do you think it's vulnerability well, vulnerability to me has always been about the, it's the it's it's that vulnerability to me is always about is actually about courage uh, that you're going to sort of have that courage to to say I'm okay <laughs> this is who I am this is what I've got uh, this is how I'm feeling this is what I'm thinking um, and 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 it's it it takes courage to to share that not hide it and courage to share the stuff that you think you should be hiding. Like right now with what's going on, no one wants to hear from the person. I lost 10 pounds. I cut out gluten. I'm doing yoga 10 hours a day. I wrote my book. Like this is all the same person. Right. I'm, I'm, I met the love of my life. I, you know, we're just like, Oh my God, that's not what's happening for me. We yeah. want to listen to the people who say, you know what? I spent the day in pajamas. I ate a tub of double fudge, um, beef or whatever you know i love jam. double fudge beef it's my favorite dish. <laughs> i put some marshmallows on it and, oh, then, yeah. and then i just stared at my cat and then i watched <laughs> friends you know yeah. we're like oh thank god yeah like that we want that feeling of oh thank god i'm not the only one who's pretending you know or i don't need to pretend anymore so but but it's true yeah. because even even with take uh, take ourselves out of COVID, I, I'm always impressed by you know let's say the person who has like climbed Mount Everest, and you're like oh my yeah. goodness they climbed Mount Everest, and then they say but you know what this weekend, <laughs> I I binged I binge watched uh, something and didn't get out of bed. It's like exactly okay, they're normal. They're normal. <laughs> So what you just said is, is, yeah. so, is so astute because we want the inspiration, but yeah. we also want the reality factor so yeah. that as individuals, we can keep striving to do more, be more, be better, but also like give ourselves some slack, I think. Yeah. That's been, I guess in a sense, there's a weird ways that the silver lining of, of all this COVID has been, A, I think we're going to be much more empathetic to each other. Um, and and two, we all realize that we're all human beings with 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 feelings. That we're not all these sort of perfect oh, people. Yeah, and and to admit the fears, like you know, I'm my mother lives on her own. She's a senior. I'm I'm scared for her. She's scared. Like people are very vulnerable right now, and and I think we always were that way. This just has magnified it. And this is the this is the beauty of now. You're you're doing the storytelling online to get people to. Um, be productive, I guess. Well, in, in some ways, yes. It's like, it's like, because it's a full process, meaning that I take you from not needing to have any idea to doing a final show, um, there is a big sense of accomplishment at the end. So yeah. that's why, what I, one of the things I like about my teaching is that you, you have something at the end. It's not just a how to now right. go away and do it. It's like, literally, I, I hold your hand and walk you through every step until you take your bow. And then people will be like, wow, I did that. And I found that once they've overcome that fear, you know, people go on to do all kinds of things like jump out of planes and get married and write a movie script. And it, 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 so hang on, it, get, getting married is a big thing. <laughs> getting married is a big scourge. It's not a big thing. It's not like jumping out of an airplane. That's not, maybe, maybe not quite. <laughs> maybe. You think for uh, a lot of people? 
but I agree, but I agree with you because I've met some of those people who have graduated and there is like, um, I don't know, there's, 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 they feel more, much more comfortable in their own skin and much more confident and correct. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anything you, anytime you do something that you thought you couldn't do, you yeah. literally expand your sense of self. You're right. like, oh my God, I did that. Well, what else can I do? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, so on that note, let's let's yeah. take a, and then we're gonna we're gonna take our little break here uh, and then after the break we're gonna talk about something that that you you're doing that is so unique and that uh, and that is reaching out to to loved ones and getting getting their stories and using your narrative therapy to help with that and I think that's really yeah. important. we'll talk about that but before we do that we're gonna do something that I like to call improv improve your communication style okay amazing Joel is it possible that I can walk downstairs and then we'll do that you want to walk downstairs? I have to go downstairs because Sarah has to leave, so I have to watch the puppy. Oh, I see. Sure. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, God, it's going to be a different background, though. Oh, no, that's okay. Okay. All right, here we go. This is good. We're, we're, I'll pretend like I'm walking, too. I'm going to make you, Tracy, the person who's always giving me the, the yes but, and then we'll yeah. switch to yes and. Okay, great. All right, so let's give a, a title to this, which is, um, uh, well, since, you know, we're, I'm going to, you know, talk about, you know, doing yoga and getting off gluten and, and all that. This will be, uh, I want you uh, to join me in running a marathon. Yes, but you know what? I, I just got a new puppy, and so I can't leave the house. Uh, yeah, well, maybe the puppy could come along for the runs. Yes, but the puppy has the run, so that's why she needs to stay in the house. <laughs> uh, okay, well, how about um, we find a schedule when uh, you can go, maybe really early in the morning? Yes, but mornings are really bad because the puppy and I do psychic training with each other, so I need those times with her. Okay, all right, you got me. All right, let's, let's switch it up to yes <laughs> and then. Okay. <laughs> I got nothing on that one. Okay. All right, let's try it again. So I'll, I'll go back in time. There's the puppy. Let's go yep. back in time. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, speaking of all this sort of, you know, yoga and gluten-free, uh, Tracy, what about you and I running a marathon together, training for that? Oh, yes. And we could go to the keg after for some double fudge beef. <laughs> ah, that's uh, great because we will have, we'll have earned it. Yes. Yes. And then we could, we could go on Facebook Live and show how amazing we look. Oh, y y yes, that would be uh, lovely because uh, I would feel, you know, we both would show that it can be done. Yes, and then we could go home to your wife and she can make us a cake. <gasps> Double fudge beef cake. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. And scene, perfect. Bravo. <laughs> Yay. Uh, thank, you for Frank, thank you for bringing that to life. You betcha. Uh, uh, boy, that yes, but it's tough when you're like giving me the yes, but it is so hard. It's it like, it you know, it's like, it kills everything. It just kills yeah. everything. And, yeah. and you know, if you're a yes butter, you can kill other people's ideas and, and confidence too, which I think is the worst, worst consequence of that. Yeah. Uh, when we switch to the yes and, um, it's, you know, you don't, yes, the, the ideas were sometimes get a little crazy, but it's, what's nice is that it is, I said, but it, what's nice about it is that we are, there's a collaboration, there's energy, and, and we know we could downsize it later. Exactly. It's much better to go too big and then pull it back. I, I talk to people about that all the time with creativity, then start small and have to yeah. pull it out. And, yeah. and, you know, when you're brainstorming with someone, you'll come up with ideas that you never would have sitting alone in your room with yes anding is great. Which I think is, is probably such a key to how, people, how you get people to tell their stories because I'm, everyone starts with a yes but. I don't want to tell this, I don't want to tell that. And then you find a yes and way to do it. Yeah, or, and, and yes and I will just sort of assign them uh, home play, I call it, instead of homework, and then they do the assignment, and, and I give a ton of positive feedback. Because it's so vulnerable and scary at, at the beginning, um, lots of praise and positive feedback at the beginning, and, um, and then later we get into how we can make it better. You know, that's what I'm hearing so much from speaking to a lot of the guests, is, is um, 
uh, how important positive affirmation is because we're already so hard on ourselves. We don't, we don't need another person. Oh, to be you, us. The, vo the voice inside is already tearing them apart. So yeah. I don't, I don't need to add to that. And I always picture people like plants and I need to put a, pour a, you know, a lot of water and a lot of sunlight to encourage them to grow and do something they've never done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to quote Kira Callahan who talks about like self-talk. She says it's that, that it's that it's like, it's like, uh, FM radio station, self-talk radio, and it's always playing in the background. Yeah. Yeah. You got to uh, turn that down. You got to turn that down and, you know, switch the station and yeah, that positive, now we're on positive affirmations, but it's got, you know, but uh, as I know, working with you, it's, it's about, it's genuine and it's real. It's not just fluff. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, I am so rooting for everyone I work with. Like I really am their own little cheering squad and the rest of the class becomes that too. So they're also getting that positive feedback loop from the other participants. Yeah, how, it's kind of learning how trust works. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. a lot of trust. Uh, and speaking of trust, let's go, um, you know, something you just started, and I guess it started by, by accident, you, just, you were just thinking of a way to be helpful. Um, and let me, let me get this right and you can correct me, which is um, reaching out to a loved one, um, you phone them and you, you, through your narrative therapy, you get them to kind of talk about their story and, and you record it so that it could now be shared with loved ones because we can't be with certain loved ones that might be in a, in a difficult situation. Yeah, so, so with what's going on right now, I was thinking a lot about you know, seniors in, in care homes or seniors living alone. And um, I was wondering, how can I help? So I don't sew, so I'm not making masks. What skills do I have? So for almost 20 years, I've helped pull people's stories out of them. Gently, but you know, <laughs> and um, so I thought, what if I volunteered to phone if you have a loved one that you can't get to see, and you'd really like to have a recording of them telling their life stories. Um, so I just, I phone them up, I tell them who I am, usually I'm, I'm connected to their relative in some way that they've asked me to do it. And for half an hour, I ask them stories about their lives and, and probing and follow-up questions to get them to expand on things. And I record it, and then I send it to the person who asked me to do it. And it's such a treat. I mean, yeah. so I get to, you know, these secret doorways into people's lives. It's really an honor. Yeah, that's good. Secret doorways is, you know, I, I would imagine, you know, and I know, and let's say talking to, to certain relatives, um, they, they don't necessarily, they don't necessarily want to share the story with, with me. I'm too close or they don't want to bore me with it, whatever, but, but you have a way to get it out. That's such a good point. Yeah. It, you, Cause you could say, well, why not have the relative phone? But you're right. When it's a stranger or they frame it that, you know, my, my specialty is stories and talking to people about their stories. I might, because I don't already know the stories, I yeah. would ask questions that the relatives wouldn't ask. Or they might feel a sense of freedom with me that they don't have to protect me from certain details and they can reveal more of the truth. Yeah, that's good. And so you have a background in, in narrative therapy, is that? Yeah, I have two certificates in uh, a technique of therapy called narrative therapy. And when I work with people, I'm not necessarily leading with that. I mean, I keep it in my back pocket because when right. we're making theater, it's, it can be therapeutic, but it's not therapy. Right. But there are some great techniques, like the one I mentioned earlier about thick description comes from narrative therapy. Yeah, and, and, and you know, uh, we're going to sort of bring to a close, but I mean, you know, the power of stories. I mean, you have a, a firm, a big belief about that. Uh, for me, stories are everything. So a, a, a number of my best friends are clergy, and I created a show called The Clergy Project, where I took clergy from different faiths and helped them tell their stories. And one of them said to me, you know, after a, a service, when they're leaving the sanctuary and, and he talks to 200 of them, he said, what do you think people remember, Trace? And I said, I don't know, Sean, what do they remember? And he said, the stories. Yeah. It's always the stories. Stories are sticky. They stay with people. We're, we're, you know, a lot of people, if you preach at them or teach at them, they will tune out because of maybe bad experiences in school. But if you wrap your message in a very compelling, honest story that you tell from the inside so they can go on the journey with you, it will stay with them. And lights fade out. And <laughs> Roll credits and see. <laughs>
<laughs> Absolutely, 100% agree. And, and it takes practice. It takes some guidance on how to tell those stories. And anyone can do it. Once you yeah. understand the structure, that, that it helps to have a structure to go through and you rehearse it and you go from the inside and you're clear on what your message is and why you're doing it and that you're bringing a gift to the audience. You're not trying to get something from them. Yeah. It can, it will change your life. And I guarantee you, it will change the lives of those who listen. Uh, I, I love that. I mean, that's, that's such a huge takeaway, like not try to force that you're trying to get something for them. Like, you know, even, even if you're doing sales, you know, if you just focus on, I, I want to get this person to sign the contract, we, that's, you, you're, you, you're just, it's a rabbit hole. You'll never get out of that. Um, and I love this idea about being thick, you know, what are the, the, the senses, the smell, the, the sight and all that, and being so present in the story so that um, you are focused on, on telling the story versus, versus your personality, versus yourself. Everybody has learned a secret or two about life that other people need to know. Right. I'm trying to think of something funny, but I got nothing. <laughs> but that's, I, a fir- that's a first. Yeah, I don't think I have a secret. Um, Tracy, this has been fantastic. This has really um, been inspirational about uh, so, some of the things that you're doing. And you know, thank you to reaching out to all these people and getting them to tell their stories and giving them the confidence and courage to, to do that. Um, so for those people, I mean, A, and we're gonna watch Drag Heels on Amazon Prime. Uh, we can see you on, on that. But now if someone wants to reach out to you, uh, whether to be uh, get you to connect with a loved one or uh, looking into the solo stories, um, what are some different ways that we can reach out to that? Amazing, thanks for asking, Joel. <laughs> You're the welcome. The website is solo.ca, S-O-U-L-O.ca. My email is tracy at solo.ca, T-R-A-C-E-Y. And every Friday, I teach a free one-hour solo workshop. If you want to get a taste of it, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So just shoot me an email and say you want to participate, and I'll send you the Zoom link. It's super fun. You walk away with at least a page of writing and new ideas on how to craft your story. It's free. You meet people from all over the world, and we dance. (laughs) That's great. I'm sure you do. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Tracy. This has been a, a real treat. Oh, uh, Joel. That's, <laughs> it's really such a pleasure. It's so good to see you. You too as well. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, listeners. We will see you next week on TFR. This week.